So tell me a little bit about how you got into this competitive eating thing. Yeah, so uh, a few years ago I was watching the ESPN uh, Nathan's eating contest yes. on July 4th and it occurred to me that all I had to do was just eat a bunch of hot dogs so I could be on TV. Something um, we've all dreamed about. Yeah. yeah. But it, it really wasn't that easy. So it was supposed to be a joke for me and my friends who were like, ah, but, you know, I ate a bunch of hot dogs, I'm on TV. Um, but it turned into a three or four year journey for me to figure it out because it's actually not that easy. Um, so it's not just a matter of how fast can you stuff food in your mouth. It's, it's really, you have to think of it more as like a sport and like how can you get better at it because the stakes are so high and the awards are so high at this point um, that there's basically the arbitrage opportunity if you want to break it down is like well, so for people eliminating. Who, so people who aren't familiar with the competitive eating world, I mean, yeah. what kind of prizes are we talking about? I mean, because, you know, you see them throwing down the hot dogs yeah. or they do taco eating contests or whatever. Yeah. What kind of money are we talking about here? What kind of opportunity? So the prize purse at Nathan's, the biggest uh, contest that we have, the World Cup of Competitive Eating, um, is $40,000. $20,000 for the men and $20,000 for the women. Um, and usually the way it purse breaks down is half of that purse goes to the winner and then from there it cascades down. So the, the winner of the women and the men's will each get $10,000 and that's a pretty good amount. And if you if you spread that out over, um, if you look at the calendar that Major League Eating has, the one that puts on Nathan's, that's the Pro League, uh, there are 70 plus contests a year. Now you should probably not go to all of them, um, it's pre pretty hard, lots of contests happen on the same day, uh, but if you you know, some of these price purses are five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars each. Um, so then you have people like Joey Chestnut or Matt Stoney or Mickey Suda, the top male and female leaders. I'm I'm number eleven in the world, but these guys are making a living out of it if they want to. Yeah. And it, so all these contests are they're they're getting money. And for those of you, I'm fascinated. I lost a million questions. Don't worry. But if you have questions out there, feel free to put them down below in the comment section. Katie, who is running. The camera today will make sure to call your questions out and your name out, so feel free to throw them in. In the meantime, I'm going back to finding out how I can make money eating, um, which is kind of a fascinating, yeah. fascinating yeah. thing. So you train. How yeah. do you train? Well, so I try to, uh, first of all, training should be done uh, with an EMT supervising you, so make sure that you're doing everything safe. In the same way that if you're swimming in a pool, or you're open water swimming for like a triathlon, I do triathlons too. Um, I wouldn't go out in the middle of the lake by myself, there's always a buddy. Um, so actually the best way to train is through one of these 70 somewhat contests that Major League Eating mm -hmm. puts on. Uh, there's always an EMT ready um, if you get into trouble. So that's basically your, your lifeguard. But if I'm at home and I'm really training for technique, which is what I usually do, um, I, I will do two or three minutes of training for a particular food, like for for corn, for example, um, I did like four or five different practices, like focusing on how best to strip the corn, and then like extrapolating after that, how well would I do in like a 12 minute contest. Um, on top of that, for capacity's sake, so you have to know that you can actually hold all the food in that 12 minutes. Yeah, because I imagine some yeah. of these contests get kind of vile with like a, I'm imagining a trough that right. goes to the side, especially the yeah. triple A. Yeah. Uh, competitive eating, right? Right. So in those cases, like if I'm training for capacity's sake, um, I'm usually doing it with something that I can handle and do multiple times, like uh, cauliflower or broccoli. So I'll do like eight or nine pounds of that and then top it off with like half a gallon of water. So we're talking like 10 to 12 pounds of like food. And there's, that's generally like the upper limit of like what you're consuming in a contest. So I can walk away from that 10 or 12 pounds worth of food in my stomach and not feel that bad about it. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, but it's a, it's an incremental so thing that you that you build up to. Um, it's not something that you, in the same way that when I'm training for uh, an Ironman, it takes me, you know, nine to 10 months from where I am now to get myself ready for that contest. And just another thing, so when you have to think of training as like increasing your abilities for the, for different areas that you'll have to do to prepare for a contest. So if I'm training for a 12 minute corn eating contest, I'm actually not gonna sit down and eat corn for 12 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna cross train, like uh, whether it's working on my, my jaw strength, this is like something that I use to, to uh, increase my jaw strength. I actually just 
bite on it and do it for minutes at a, you know, we can just multiple minutes at a time. Bite up and down on this device. Yeah. Uh, Katie, can you get a, can you get this a little closer? We're sitting here today with, uh, what'd you say, number seven in the world? Number 11. Number 11. Oh, I just gave you a better title. Are you sure you don't want to keep mine? Well, uh, I get the seven. Yeah, so, okay. Next time he comes on, he'll be number seven. Number 11 in the world of competitive eating talking about competitive eating and will do some eating for us a little later to talk about how he uh, trains right now. We're talking about these, you just bite down on the yeah. shoulders. You're sitting at work and you do have a real job. Yeah. I mean, right. the competitive eating isn't your job. So you're sitting down at work just chewing on that all day. Why not gum? Well, so, you know, in, 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 in competitive eating, there's a lot of opportunity for like innovation and making things better. There's no like one right way to eat a corn, but there are better ways to eat a corn and I'll explain in just a second. But, uh, so I basically, if I'm, if I'm leading up to a contest, I'm like basically figuring out what do I need to do between now and that contest. Right. Uh, I calendarize all my training. I figure out how much draw strength I need to do, what my baseline is in the same way that I Calendarizing like my Ironman training or my marathon training, and then like tracking my 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 uh, my deficiencies and working on them. So if I, if it seems that like in a in a speed training session with like two or three minutes of core and then mm -hmm. my jaw is getting uh, tired, then I'll work on my jaw strength. If it seems that my technique is off, I actually record all my training sessions and like break it down in slope and slow motion and time it and see like what went wrong. Um, Am I wasting too much time chewing? Am I dropping too much on in my pan in front of me? Is that wasting time? Like, and I find those little things and I fix them along the way. Um, but just just getting back to the corn. Mm -hmm. Three weeks ago, I won the uh, the world corn eating championship, and I broke the world record. And the reason I the way I did that was I actually sat down and thought about what is what are we doing right and what are we doing wrong in competitive eating and I, I didn't start with like how are the top folks doing it right I just completely started from scratch and thought about well how do commercial corn strippers strip their corn really fast and can I use that idea uh, to, to incorporate it into my so, yeah. so you're allowed to bring in aid you don't have to sit here and chow down like we do at a barbecue no actually you can't bring an aid in but like what I what I found out was that this is a device a corn stripper that you can use at home um, and it makes stripping corn really, really easy. It's just, it's a stripping type motion from, right. from top to bottom. Uh, but knowing that idea, uh, I will, how, I've tried to figure out, well, how can I use that information knowing that this is a really efficient way to do it? How can I do that with what I have here without using any tools? And I decided that if I could basically substitute this part for the top of my mouth, like the teeth right here. This is very whereas nice everybody, method. yeah, absolutely. So whereas so most people something. like this is yeah. called the typewriter method, and right. it really wears out your jaw. And there's no amount of jaw strength that strengthening that you can do to like get you to beat the number that I did. I did 47 in 12 minutes. You did 40, 47 corns. And yeah, in 12 minutes. So what? So that's like you know four or so every every minute. So you know I'm gonna have to ask you to eat that corn in a second, so that I'm like trying to find my clock. I mean that's that's a lot of right. So, um, so then I, I experimented, I tried these speed uh, techniques at home and I, uh, I perfected it, I videotaped it, I timed myself. Yeah. Um, I got corn that was from Florida, because the contest was in Florida, I wanna make sure oh, yeah. that my food was like le legit. I mean, this is six, it was a $6,100 price purse, so there was, you know, it was worth my time to invest a little so bit of time. You're investing in stocks, you're investing in, in your corn ticket. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, I think people are getting like the motions from them that want to see you try to sure. eat one of at least just a corn, and I can yeah. time you for that. Yeah. And Katie, we can, Katie and I can both time so that you can put this up in front. People can see the time. Sure. As you go. I'm happy uh, to demonstrate. Oh look! Also, you got you got a little serious now. Oh yeah. We've got the uh, the competitive. Uh, I'm going to take you down, sort of thing. Yeah. You know, can you, get, so, you got a wife at home who lets you do this. My wife, my wife is very supportive uh, <laughs> of this. Yeah. So, uh, so just to demonstrate my technique before I do yeah. it, I use the top of my teeth. You can also use the bottom of your teeth, but your, bit, your lower lip gets in the way. Uh, at least with your top teeth, you can you can recreate this particular motion, uh, and it takes about eight or nine passes to get the majority of the corn out, and then. 
there's always a little bit left over on the ends here, so I just kind of round it up and then uh, pull over just to make sure. So it's that so I get what you've got to do is pull everything to actually like be counted, so to speak. Yeah. Everything's got to come off. About um, you know about oh. 90, 95 percent. Like you know. And they come over and they check your. Yeah. The guys that have been putting on the the corn eating contest have been doing it for twelve years, and they judge it, and they're you know they're really fair, and they know what they're looking for, and the competitors are really honest. So you don't really have to worry about that. This is America, folks. This is yeah. what we do. We have people who have come up with the idea of competitive food. Kevin's very excited over from social. He's with us about this whole thing. So should we do um, one thing of corn? So pass the yeah, I can probably put this down. Let's just say fifteen seconds. You think fifteen uh, seconds? Yeah. Okay, and uh, yeah. before we start, is anybody out there thinking what how long they think it might take? We have some, uh, you know, we can put. A I mean, I think we can do it thirteen. I might be able to do that. <laughs> All right. So while we've got people going, uh, we are about ready to start. So um, I'm gonna sit over here with my stopwatch and ready. Might get a little messy, so that's okay. I, I can take flying corn. It's okay. like I have ready, set, go. Oh my god. Oh wow. He is like King Rip, four seconds. Seven. I feel like we should have gotten him a bid. Twelve seconds. Thirteen. That's about right. Thirteen. Wow. Yeah. Although, you know, to be fair, can, can you get a shot of the whole, uh, we got a little bit of a... I'm going to put this on here, just to be fair. So. <laughs> Just so I, I want to clarify, this corn was a little soft, but that's fine. But you have to be ready for any um, any uh, food that comes your way, whatever it's, it's cooked. So if you see here, I'd say this is about like 85, maybe 90% clear. The judges would deem this um, mostly okay. They would have deducted probably, I did 10 of these, um, and they were all around the same. I'd probably be deducted about half a corn. So I actually ate 48 corn, um, and I was counted uh, 47. Wow. So it's not a perfect science, but like this is generally okay. You know, this is probably not great, but yeah, but you get the general idea. Okay, feel free if you are uh, out there watching to ask any questions. I can't believe more people aren't asking questions because I'm beyond fascinated about the fact that you found a way to earn money um, making yeah. a mess. Yeah, yeah, but you know, uh, so I just so I'm uh, very clear. I do make money off of this, but this is this is very firmly in my like my fun activity like <laughs> bucket, as opposed to like my Ironman or uh, marathon goals, which are very firmly in my um, life goals or uh, like dream bucket. Like, do I want? How, do, you know, my goals for this year for Ironman is to get um, under uh, 13 hours for my total time. Which yeah. I'm going to be doing Ironman Maryland for the second time this year. Be my fifth Ironman. For marathon, I'd love to get under four hours. My fastest is four hours and four minutes. But do you have a but, goal of being number seven in the world for competitive eating? You know, I do, but like not in the same sense. So like in that, like com in competitive eating is more like I, I get to hang out with my, uh, my new competitive eating family. Uh, as I like to with call Joey it. Chestnut. Joey Chestnut, Matt Stoney, Mickey Sudo, Eric Badlands, Booker, Crazy Lakes, Conti. Um, well, I mean, when you go out to eat with those guys, you go to Carmine's, or I mean, are we talking like it's get out of the way of the food? I mean, what are they? So it's really, it's really funny. Like, so these, these, so we all come from different walks of life in the competitive eating world. Like, where I'm, I'm a marketing director, Crazy Lakes Conti um, is a window washer. Uh, Tim Janis works at a pizzeria. Um, Matt Stoney and Joey Chestnut both do this full time. Mickey Sudo also works in marketing. We all come from like completely different walks of life, but there are like certain personality traits that we all have. Um, and so when we do these contests, we're still ready to go right afterwards. So we're, uh, let's say a contest over at five, we're all the way, we only see each other once or twice a month or so. And so we're 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 ready to party for till two a.m. in the morning. You're right going in and eat. How many hot dogs did you eat at the last contest? I ate 30, 30, 30 so you, even. You go eat thirty hot dogs at a competitive eating contest and go out drinking. Let's say I, I I can't even imagine. Let's take a question. So Stacy wants to know if you actually chew the corn, yeah. um, or do you just? Well, see, these are yeah. So with corn specifically, these are really small uh, uh, kernels. So no, not really. They they just go right down. With something like wings, for example. Which is what we're gonna hit up yeah. next. With wings, it's a little bit more complicated. A couple of chews, 
uh, but you don't want to spend too much time chewing or leave food in your mouth. It, as a general rule, it's just a waste of time. Wow, and when we were talking about, when we go to these competitive hot dogs, oh, what we, have a lot of we have a lot of requests for, for the uh, donuts. Oh, donuts. Donuts. Oh, well, yeah. Almost unanimous. Almost unanimous, we want to go to donuts. The donuts. Okay, right. so this is actually good. One of my favorite foods to compete with, um, uh, it's not, so, I don't eat donuts every day, but when I do, I eat a lot of them. My record is 54 donuts in the Donut Derby bicycle race in Pennsylvania last year in September. 54 Krispy Kreme donuts over the course of a 36 mile race. So what these Truda donuts are, uh, are something a little bit different than Major League Eating Contests. Major League Eating Contests are pure eating contests, but I found a way a couple of years ago to put my bicycle, love of bicycle and uh, Ironman races together with my competitive eating. And I just stumbled upon these races called the Tour de Donuts. They've been going on for about 28 years. The, lo the one that's been going on the longest is in Illinois. Um, so I've won all of them that I've competed in, uh, in Utah, in Illinois, Wait, you in, flat out one. That completely one. So this is yeah. your this is your thing. The tour yeah. of the donut. We yeah. are talking to the tour of the donut. The winner. Yeah. Uh, I would love to meet somebody who could beat me at it. Uh, oh, wait, please, this please, is a challenge. Please I know where he is now, so if you think you can beat him, we can you know, work this out. Look up Tour de Donuts in Ohio, in Utah, in Illinois. Uh, they haven't started yet. Uh, there is one coming up in California next week, the San Luis Obispo Tour de Donut, uh, which I think is the most challenging one because it's a two-stage race and there's a time trial. So what I do in the contest, in the, in the race, whenever I stop at the donut stops, is I'll get 12 of these donuts right here and I'll compress them down and I'll eat them all at once. Um, I'll eat three dozen donuts or so in the first donut stop. There's only two donut stops in a 36 mile race. Uh, for every donut that you eat in these races, you get three to five minute time credit. So let's say I did the race in uh, two hours. So if I eat, let's say uh, 24 donuts, I'm basically even on time. I would basically, like, like I didn't even track any time in the race. Um, yes. So I can, I can, uh, I won't do all 12 at one time, but I could do I think three to demonstrate. I think they kind of want you to do 12. I think they, a, they want to see the most we can. We'll do, do well, how about we do three and then we do nine. Okay, I can we'll do that. We'll do three as a demonstration. Mm -hmm. So this is what I do, and you can you can see I have there's probably a video online somewhere of somebody uh, recording it. But I'll take 12 donuts. Now you're not completely happy with the donuts I got, right? No, I'm I'm fine. I mean, like they're glazed donuts. Uh, the easiest donuts to eat, in my opinion, are Krispy Kreme, like completely glazed. So like these guys right here, but these are like a little sugary. That's okay. We can deal with that. Uh, but like ideally, it would be like these right here, uh, a little less sugar. But when you're going out to like Utah and Ohio, they're generally from like small bakeries um, that make their donuts a little bit bigger. So you should be prepared for anything. Um, everybody will have the same donuts. So what I do is I'll take the 12 donuts, I'll compress them down. The reason for that is, is that you have a lot of air in these donuts. There's no point in um, taking the air down. It's just gonna stay in your stomach and like, but you would take so, cool. I mean, I'm actually, now that I'm seeing three, I'm feeling like that's yeah. just a sandwich. I feel like we need to add, that okay. we need to do it. We can yeah. do six. How's you that? Know? You said, what do we think out there? I mean, what do people want? Yeah, yeah they're, they're excited. They're, they're six, excited? Okay. Six? I can do, yeah. You can do six. Now, you're doing this in one, when you're doing this competition, yeah. you jump off your bike, right? Yeah. You go out there, you smash these down, yeah. and you just stick that whole thing in your mouth. Like as if, fast as I can. So right? having a big mouth, it's actually, this is the job for you, Yeah, right? but, so you have to think of like, you have to think the entire journey down to your stomach. So like, you could have a big mouth, but you gotta make sure that you're just not leaving it in there. You don't tr create a traffic jam. So there has to be a constant flow. So small bites are actually much better oh, really? than like a really big bite because your throat's only so big. Um, I'm not really sure how long I do this, but like I'll do three dozen in about 10 minutes. So uh, this, will, this should be one and a half minutes, so 90 seconds. Okay, so when you want to start to get everybody really, I mean, everybody excited about this, this guy is. Yeah. Liz's job is eating donuts. Well, okay, Kevin's really excited about it. Katie's really excited yes. about it. Uh, cool. you, know, you guys start competitive eating. I'm going to do again what I did before. All right. Ready? And I'm, I'm prepared to get donut my eye because I got corn. And I'll explain afterwards why I'm drinking and all that kind of good stuff. Okay. Will you tilt the screen a little? Tilt the screen. Is that better? A little other way. This one? Yeah. Right there? All right. Ready, set, go. All right. You should actually hear him.
We are here just reminding you, uh, talking about competitive eating with Yasser Salem, and he is now eating six glazed and sugared donuts. Um, we are at 24 seconds, seeing how fast he could go. He is a competitive eating champion uh, when it comes especially to the donuts, on the tour to donuts. We're here at the Daily Mail Studios here in New York City. Uh, middle of the day, having some, some quick donuts. Uh, this is, we're at 44 seconds now. Today, today's National Pie Day. Today is National Apple Pie Day. So for Apple Pie Day, we're eating donuts. It makes complete sense. Uh, that's actually where we started, and we are looking at other opportunities. And we still have it in your mouth. And he's getting the last of the donuts. We are at one minute and two seconds. He's got it clear. We are 110. Yep. All done. All done at 114. So how do you keep off the pounds when you eat this much? So it's amazing. <laughs> so I work out. So basically with this stuff, I only eat uh, competitively eat about once, maybe twice a month. And uh, the reason why it works out is it's really just a math equation. So I I put in about ten hours of working out every week at this point. Um, I'm uh, several months away from my Ironman training, so I know how many calories I'm burning every day, and I, I just make sure I, I don't look at it like really really closely. But if, if I know I'm going to be eating 54 donuts one week, I better be sure like before and after I'm ready for it. Um, again, this is not happening every day. If I eat 54 donuts every day. <coughs> I would be in serious trouble, uh, but you know I only compete in four or five shorted donuts every year. That's still a lot of yeah. donuts. It is a lot of donuts, but again, it's firmly in like my fun category. And as long as like I am ready for it before and after with like my ten-hour workouts every week, then I'm good to go. I don't recommend this to anybody if you're not going to work out. If you're not going to do anything with all those calories, yeah, um, don't do it. It's not going to work out for you. Um, it's just, you're just gonna get big and uh, you're gonna feel bad about yourself. But like, for me, I treat 54 donuts uh, every four weeks out of the year as my treat to working out 10 hours a week. Wow, yeah. I guess it's, it's what you could say. But when you, when you met your wife, you meet a friend and you yeah. say, I'm a competitive donut eating champion. Yeah. What's your Everybody has name? a lot of questions. Um, the one that at some point people ask, um, do you throw it up? It's always the elephant in the room. Yeah, and I'm kind and the of answer, and The answer is is definitely no. I mean, there are there are different ways to deal with the problem, but like physiologically, there is actually no use for you to do that. Like, if the point, if the goal is to keep the weight off, just work it out, or um, you can um, fast for a few days and make sure that you're, you know. Uh, equalizing, but don't do it too long. Or you're just, your metabolism is just going to crash. So what I do is I just make sure that I'm not overdoing it on eating before and after for a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have to, to fast to get rid of the bloating, you know, lower the sugar intake for a few days. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> it's really just a matter of making sure I work out uh, and don't overdo it on the calories. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm good. We can get you some more water too. Uh, is there any other questions out there? So I, I know it's, that was a lot to take in. So when we, I watched the hot dog eating contest. Yep. I know, I'm obsessed, don't worry about it. It's, it'll, it'll go away, maybe. Yeah. You dip in the water. Yep. And I saw you drink a whole thing of water now. Yep. What's the key for the water? So <clears throat> there are certain foods like corn where uh, you have like the fluid already built in. And that's really good <clears throat> for efficiency purposes. Because that means you don't have to take a break like I just did uh, in taking the corn down. Um, and over the course of a 10 or 12 minute contest, a second per per piece of food adds up really fast. Let's say you eat 60 pieces of food, that's an entire minute. That's almost 10% of a contest. That's really wasted time that you have to eliminate and figure out. Mm -hmm. However, with contests like, or, or, or foods like, that are highly breaded like this or with low fluid content, you have no choice but to like a resort to like drinking water. Um, but there, that doesn't mean you have to pick up the cup. Um, you can dip the foods. In my case with donuts, um, I've chosen that the best uh, technique for me 
is to compress all the foods to get to compress the, the bread in order to get rid of the air and then I have 12 donuts to deal with as one unit and then I deal with picking up the top. I found that to be like the most efficient way to do it. However, with hot dogs where it's like important that you keep it moving, you can't just take 12 hot dogs, stick them in your mouth, and then get 12 buns and compress them. It doesn't work. Every food's a little different. So uh, with hot dogs, you, we dip, we eat the meats and then we dip them in the water. Um, that's the generally accepted way to do it. There might be a better way that nobody has discovered, but um, that's the one I roll with. And we, so maybe we can move on to the wings? Yeah, we, uh, oh. yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the wings and why we don't use condiments like uh, butter or butter on the corn or when you do wings, you know, you don't really want to do sauces either. Sure, yeah. So last year at the Hooters Wing Eating Championship, uh, Matt Stoney ate 246 wings. Uh, the previous record was, uh, and that was in 10 minutes, the previous record that Joey Chestnut had uh, set the year before was 190 wings. Now the top four of us, I was number four this year, I ate 192 wings, so I broke the world record, and everybody above fourth place broke the world record. So I had beaten Joey Chestnut's number last year. Uh, but Matt and I compared notes. Um, so Joey Chestnut only beat me by eight wings last year. Um, <laughs> I but really Matt Stoney and I compared notes, and they were different techniques, mm -hmm. but we had all gotten to the point where we had improved like numbers from the year before, uh, but Matt did it just a little bit better um, than all of us. In fact, you know, 25% 20, better than all of us, and that's, you know, that's why Matt's so good. He really puts his heart into it. So, but with, with wings, for example, we have uh, two ways. Uh, so there's generally in a contest you have two different the two different types of wings. You have the drum, which is this part of the wing right here. Just looks like a drumstick. Um, and then we have the flats here. Mm -hmm. In a contest, this part, the, the the little end is not there. So this is this is this is what a Hooters wing eating championship um, uh, flat looks like. It has two bones in it, um, and. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. it's not breaded. So this is this is prepared a little bit differently than a wing eating uh, the the Hooters wing eating championship. So there's no bread. It's, it's what we call naked, and there's no sauce on it. Unfortunately, um, there wasn't a Hooters nearby today, and I didn't didn't share that I needed to go into a Hooters to buy this. But next time at Hooters, we can yeah. talk about doing a. It's the same general together. technique. So for for wing eating, um, what I found and 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 a couple of the eaters have discovered the best way to do it again is to is to look for ways to be better than last year. So what I did is I looked at Joey Chestnut's videos from last year and I slowed it down and I analyzed every move that he did. And I discovered ways where he was just, uh, uh, where he could have gained a little bit of time on every single wing. wing. And what, what I decided that was that the most amount of time, the 80% of like the, the improvement that I could do is in one thing. And that is the time that it takes for him to take it from his mouth and drop it um, in his pant and pick up another one. You that, mean that, that, lift, that little yeah. motion right it, it, there. Half a second multiplied over, uh, uh, even a quarter second multiplied over 200 wings is a lot of time. So what I decided the best way to deal with that problem was, and I have no problem like sharing these types of techniques because um, uh, I, I just want people to do it better. If you come along the way and you enter a contest and do it better, great, that's all. Is, um, I will take three wings, mm -hmm. you know, and I feel like I have to give you a little another plate here. Yeah, so I'll take three wings. We start off with uh, 20 pounds of wings approximately, and they weigh the wings beforehand, they weigh our bowls before and after, and whatever the differential is, that's what you ate. So what I do is I would take, I'm left-handed, so I, I do most of my, my, you know, the harder movements with my left hand, um, and then the scraping with my right hand. So I will take two wings and put them in the palm of my hand, and I'll take my first wing and I'll, and I'll stick it up here. So what that does is, uh, and then I have a, a, a technique that I use to strip the meat a little bit better than the previous year. So I'll strip that meat down and I'll just drop it. So there's no transit there, like no quarter second. And I just load the other wing up like, you know, a whole, you know, a holster, not a holster gun, but like multiple bullets in the chamber and then I just go on to the next one. So that right there, just that general idea saves me a quarter to a half a second per wing. And that adds up really fast. Uh, you should see, I mean, I don't know if you can see Kevin's face, he does social here. He is like <laughs> totally engaged. Yeah. In so the these are, just to back up real quick, so it's these kinds of contests where 
capacity, like the 10 or 12 pounds of food doesn't really matter. I mean, in, in 200 wings is about four pounds of food. If you train just a little bit, you can get to that capacity. So corn also, like 47 corn on the cob, that's about six pounds of food. Little stretching it, but like, we're still not talking about 10 or 12 pounds of food where if I'm going against Joey Chestnut in a chili or a yogurt eating contest. Does that exist? Yeah, chili eating contest, one of our biggest uh, eating contests in, in, in DC. It's, uh, I believe it's in August. I will never, at my current level, I will never beat Joey Chestnut. I'm at a serious disadvantage. He has like many more years of experience and, and like capacity. <laughs> so I, my specialty is like technique contests, like corn, like wings, where like I can discover these quarter second like tweaks and I can make something out of it. So the other thing that I did with wings is um, Joey does really well. Uh, so with these two bones that are in here. How do you not choke? Well, there's always a chance of something going wrong. But um, in, Joey said this to me before, in the same way that Michael Phelps doesn't, doesn't drown during the Olympics, as professionals, we've been doing this for a while, we shouldn't be choking. You know, so we're uh, we, you know we're at a slight advantage in most people that you know we kind of we kind of we kind of have some. You know what? Well, so I know this isn't perfect. Could we see you eat a sure. couple of these? Because I know this isn't per the perfect conditions yeah. for you. But, That's all right. So um, I can probably I'm just gonna bring this water over here and I'll show you how I load these two two wings up right. Josh here. likes that you compare yourself to an Olympian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, maybe in curling I can do that someday. There's a low well, I mean, you you are kind of. Yeah. You're training, you've yeah. got your technique yeah. down, you do a bunch of these, so. so. So, you know, what we do here is we stick, see, right between the two bones, this is the, the first bone, the second bone, I stick my finger in there, and then I put my top finger on the top and the top and the bottom finger on the bottom. This is never, it's never always perfect, but that's the general idea. It's like a uh, yeah. So use your use not just your mouth, but use what you have, and that's your hands. And like this could be a really good tool in the same way that I use my teeth, not my jaw. You know, use the things that are not going to wear out over ten minutes. So I'll just do uh, three wings real okay. quick. The three wings will. That's fun. And ready? Yep. Go. So we're. This is quite a thing. What, 10 seconds? 10 seconds. And he still got it in his mouth, rubbing the last of the water. I feel like it's like my kids, I want you to open your mouth. Yeah. All right, we yeah. have about 19 seconds There's there. a little bit left over there. But see, in a wing eating contest, that doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. I mean, like you have to move on. That's the thing about um, debris contests, as we call them, when you have some, you have an amount of food before and you have an amount of food after. You can't dwell upon like cleaning something really well. I don't know, but you look at these bones. They're, yeah. they're, I mean, there's a little bit of the right. side, but it's pretty. It's pretty cleaned out. You have to give yourself a, like a certain amount of time to do something, and if you and you do as best as you can and move on. I and mean, if you're in a contest where 200 items is what your goal is, you can't spend time on like one or two. It's just it's not going to work in your favor. What I actually do, and that work has worked really well this year, something new that I've tried is I put on headphones, and you might see some people like Badlands Booker listen to music. Now, I put on like headphones and I have a counter that counts every second. Whereas I used to have, the reason for that is I need to know literally every second like where I'm at so I can pace myself. I, I give myself 15, 12 to 15 seconds of corn to finish, you know. I know I have to stay on that pace or, you know, it's just not gonna work out. With wings, I give myself two seconds each. Wow. And there's no time for me to look down on my, uh, what I used to do is have a timer, and this is generally accepted way of doing things. Look on a timer on the table and figure out where I'm at. It just doesn't work that way. So I like to stick the, 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 um, the, the timer in my ears and it keeps me on pace. I mean, this is absolutely, I, I mean, I, I wish I had more food for you to eat. And, yeah. I, and I think everybody else up there wishes I had more food for you. But this yeah. just means that, we have to come back and bring Zoe Chestnut and Matt Stoney, Matt Stoney especially as we get closer to July 4th. Yeah, yeah. who's going to win on July 4th? That's going to be really tough. I think uh, Matt Stoney is, I would say, the favorite. Joey Chestnut, um, I think it's going to be really close. I think it's going to be between Joey and Matt. I'm going to give it all I have. Uh, 
Uh, but I think what you'll find this year is there's going to be a really strong fight for third. Um, I don't know yet what I'm going to put up. Uh, I have a general idea. Ray, uh, what do you I think? Have, you ready uh, to throw it down now? Well, I'll come back I to I want to do at least 40 this year. Okay, at least 40 uh, hot dogs. And I'm okay with that. Um, and so that will put me in really strong contention for third place. We have some really strong eaters. Oh, so you're really looking at I would like to do third this year. That's like my goal. Anything above that, I'll set, let's say I'll settle for third, uh, but I'll fight for first always. I always fight for first. Uh, when I went into the corn eating contest, I wasn't telling myself I'm going to go for third. I was going for first and I was going for the world record, which I set. Uh, so that's always my mindset, and that's all of our mindset. And remind everybody, what's the world record for corn? It's hold? now it's now 47 corn on the cob in 12 minutes. The previous record was 46, and that stood for about six years. It was a really hard record to crack, but right. I did it. And you did it. So, yeah. you know, we can see again when it comes to July 4th. I'd love to see you uh, third. I will be there. Yeah. Standing up. Uh, hopefully you guys will be there too, and we'll try to have some more competitive eaters back because I'm going to a contest and I'm taking you guys with me for sure. Uh, so thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Tune in um, a little later. We'll have some more Facebook Live.